just going to do a very quick overview of what the training would have been. And if you are interested in going forward with using Google Sites, just reach out to your instructional technology facilitator and we'll be most happy to help you. So to get to the link, I will put that in the um, email that I'm sending you guys to get to this presentation. So I wanted to do a quick overview of Google Sites and then do a deep dive in how to create the site. So we're going to do that. I'm going to skip past all of this stuff that we normally do. Um, so our purpose is to look at Google Sites in a different way instead of just thinking of a teacher web page. You can still use it as a teacher web page, but you don't have to. You can use it for so much more. So we're not going to do evidence of learning because I can't give you CEU credits when we're not together and working on stuff. So I'm going to skip past that part. So the reason that we would use Google Sites is it talks to everything Google. So it's very easy to use. You can pull in anything that's in Google Drive um, and easily embed it into the site. And you can use it to make learning dynamic for your students. So how is Sites different from Google Classroom? Google Sites is more of a public platform where it allows you to share work out. It gives you an easy way to compile information so you could put together your units or your activities for your students to go there and have everything in one place. It's easy for students to use to build a portfolio and it's super easy to embed content because you can embed uh, videos and what have you into Google Sites versus Google Classroom. Google Classroom is a great platform. I would still highly use that constantly. It's a closed environment though, so nobody sees what goes on in your classroom except you and your students. And it's more focused on like acting as a learning management system where you have grades and rubrics and are able to give feedback and comments, basically where you're assigning and collecting work. So in the hands of teachers, Google Sites can be used as lesson delivery. So I have linked an example of a biography study. So this was made with the new Google Sites. Given the students their task, these things are linked. So this is linked out actually to Epic Books for a collection of books on these people. Uh, Jennifer Sarajevo strategies that the students would pick one of these that you normally would use in the classroom to continue with. And then they would express their learning with one of these three tools. So that's one way it could be used in elementary as lesson delivery. And then this is a secondary example for World War II. You've got the home screen with the information. You have the practice piece. And you have where they're going to put a voice thread together to give them their creation part. And even a quiz is linked. And the final piece is, oh, look, Padlet that we've done in PD and your PJs before. So those are examples in the hands of teachers. And you can click these links and explore them more because you're going to have this presentation. In the hands of students, including even an elementary kid, this is a kindergarten portfolio that they have um, created pages for math, reading and writing, their collaborative work, buddy work, and things that they have explored. And this is a screenshot of the reading and writing page that has been zoomed out. So the stuff that they've created in Google has been embedded in their little Google site. This is a secondary example of physics portfolio that's linked here. There's a screenshot of the page explaining what the, who the student is and then the pages that are included. Again, you can explore that if you would like to. So, hands-on time. So this is where I would have flipped over to Google Drive and walked you guys through how to create a Google Site. So Google Sites now lives inside of your Google Drive. So you would click New, hover over More, and then choose Google Sites, which is the fourth choice down. And remember, you can pause this video if you're trying to follow along because I know I'm flying through this. So you click Google Sites. <clears throat> it automatically creates your blank home page. You would title your site up here. So I'll name this one Demo. And then you can put whatever your title of your page would be. So if you're creating a website for yourself or you're delivering content to your students or you're going to give them an example portfolio for them to create. If you don't like the default heading, you can change that by uploading an image 
or selecting one of their choices in the gallery. So you can change it and then select one and click select. So you can make it pretty. Then you'll notice over on the left hand side of the screen it's defaulted to the insert tab. So you can insert text boxes, images, embed codes, drive, you've got layouts of different ways that you can make the page look. And as you scroll down, you'll see other options of things that you can add. So you can actually have a table of contents. If you've got a bunch of pictures that you want to put on a site, you can use the image carousel. You can use buttons to make it even prettier. And there are GIFs of all of this inside of this presentation that you can look at as well. You also can double click in the space and it will bring up the wheel of things that you can add. So if you want to add text, there's your text box. Click in the space. If you want to add something from Drive, it pulls Drive up over on the right hand side of the screen. You have the little arrow button so you could actually go over and click on Recent and pull up whatever is in your recent folder or that you've had up recently or in you, that um, you want to add to your page. So let's say I want to put this presentation in so I can double click it or click it one time and click Insert and the presentation goes into the page. It's that simple. Notice also, notice also over on the right hand side other than the insert tab you have a pages tab so you can add your additional pages. So if you want more than just a home page you want to have other pages of things like for the portfolio example there was a page for ELA, there was a page for math, there was a page for collaborative work so you could add pages by just clicking on the new page. Themes will allow you to change the theme or the outlook of your final Google slide. And you've got some flexibility with your color choices where you can change your color backgrounds and stuff here. So that's the quick overview. Let's go back to the presentation. So you'll see in the presentation, there is a GIF showing you where to go in your Google Drive to get started. A reminder of how to make it pretty, so you can edit your colors, you can change your layout, you can change your font size by making it all pretty. You can embed links, so if you want to embed something, say a YouTube video, you can go insert, choose YouTube and grab the YouTube um, URL or the, the embed code and it will embed for you. If you're pulling files from Google Drive, you need to make sure that your files are shared to your audience. So if this is only for your students, you can share your document, your presentation to your students, everybody in Gaston County Schools or to the world, depending on your audience. So please keep that in mind. If you forget that, your end viewer, your audience is going to see a little box that will ask them to request permission to be able to see it and you don't want that on a website. <clears throat> Excuse me, when you're finished, you're going to go to publish and then share it. And you're going to want to manage and change it with share it out to Gaston County Schools or share it publicly. If you want other people to help edit the site, then you also add that here. So you can add a co -collabor collaborator onto your Google site. We're not going to do the artifact. So that is a quick overview, um, very quick overview of what we have done tonight. We're not going to have a PD in your PJs in March because of March Madness, but we will have PD at your desk. So if you want to learn about Adobe Spark, that will happen on March the 10th. And you notice the times are 8, 10, 9, 45, 11, 30, 1, 30, and 3, 35. So if you're interested, go to our website, bit.ly slash Gaston Digital and sign up for that. Our next PD in your PJs will be April the 23rd and we're going to focus on how to use Google Forms for more than just a straight quiz. There is so much you can do with Google Forms. So I hope to see you on April the 23rd. And